In this tutorial, we're going to talk about a very powerful tool that's available through Scikit-Learn. That's known as the pipelines. Now, you already know that Scikit-Learn is the backbone library for all machine learning in Python. And pipelines help us streamline multiple data pre-processing and training steps into a single chain. So it's very helpful and handy for people who want to do some practical data science. This tutorial would cover an introduction to pipelines where we will show you in a hands-on way how we can go about clubbing multiple data pre-processing steps. And we'll also teach you something very different, which you will generally not find in any example available on the internet, which talks about how do we bring our custom functions within these pipelines. You will understand it better when we start with the hands-on example. So we've generated some data and I'll just start by showing you the head of the data. This is how a simple data is. This data has a mix of numeric and categorical features. We have columns which are simply named as num0 to num4. These are five features. Then we have three categorical features with some categories and we have a target feature. Generally, you get the data like this. You have different features, could be a mix of data types. Let's do a general info check for this data to understand this a little better. So we have thousand rows and we have nine columns. We know the data types and we also get an idea that we have some missing values in some of the features. Because this is a synthetic data, I've introduced missing values in just two features. One is a numeric feature, another is a categorical feature. If you want to exactly investigate as to how many missing values are there per feature, we can always do is null dot sum. And this tells us that there are 100 missing values in this feature called num0, and there are 67 missing values in this feature called cat1. Now we understand that in terms of data pre-processing, numeric and categorical features have different requirements. For example, you check for missing values in both numeric and categorical features, but they will be treated in different ways. You may simply use an average for a numerical feature, but you can't use an average for a categorical feature. Likewise, the presence of outliers would be meaningful only for numeric features and not so much for the categorical features. So here we'll have to work on the data based on the data type. So in the next step, what we're doing is we are selecting all the numerical features now, if you notice our target column or the column which is basically what we are interested in predicting was also containing numbers only. But we don't want to, of course, do any treatment on this. This is already given as zeros and ones. So while selecting the numerical features, we are ignoring the target column and managing the rest of the features. So here what we're doing is we are saying, let's select a numeric subset of the overall data, which would include only the numerical features except the target column. So we are doing a dot drop access one, which is for the columns, and we will check what's the head of this data looking like. So it has been able to segregate all the numerical features for us. So we already know there are missing values in a numerical feature. That's a problem known. What else could be the problem with the numerical features? We may have the presence of outliers and outliers are best detected using the box plot. So we are going over or enumerating over the list of features dfnum.columns would give us the list of features. We are enumerating over it i, j. So i would be just the index and j would be the name of the feature. And we are creating our box plots to see what all features contain outliers. So this is a code you must already be familiar with by now because we have used it in a lot of previous examples. Let's see. So we have a number of features. In fact, all the features have some of the other outliers present, right? You can see you have upper end outliers, lower end outliers, almost everywhere we have outliers. This one doesn't have upper end outliers, but has lower end outliers. And this one too has outliers at the lower end only. So we have outliers present in our data and that's something which is clear. First, we are kind of understanding the opportunities and then we'll go about applying the pipeline to treat them all together. Let's also do a descriptive summary of the data. And you know, descriptive summary by default gives you all the numerical features. So we get to know that we have features, but the features are not necessarily on the same scale. Why? Because the minimum values, if you see, are varying. The minimum value for a given feature is negative 0.44 to negative 883. And maximum value again is, let's say 604 for a given feature versus a 0.72 for another feature. So the features are not of the same magnitude. This is another opportunity with the data, which may be needed to be treated. This is about the numerical features. Let's move on to the categorical features. So we are once again, selecting only the object type features and checking the head of the data. 
For the categorical features, the only aspect we'll be interested in would be that how many categories are present. In a nutshell, we want to check how many levels are present for each categorical feature. And that is obtained by using n unique. So what we are doing is we are going over the list of categorical features and we are just printing out unique categories in each categorical feature are, so we'll get the number. This is just a simple string formatting. And we get to know the categorical feature one has three levels, two has three levels, and categorical feature three has five levels. Assuming that there is no order in these features, we may simply choose to apply something like a one hard encoder here. So let's now understand the imports that we'll be needing for pipelines. Of course, from scikit-learn pipeline, we'll have to import the pipeline and we'll also have to import the column transformer. This class basically helps us put together the numeric and categorical chains in the pipeline. Now, these are some of the classes that you're already familiar with. There is a simple imputer for missing value treatment. There is a standard scaler for scaling the data to a standard normal distribution. And there is a one hard encoder which converts the categories into numbers based on the categories present in the data. Now, we are also importing two other classes, base estimator and transformer mixin, because I'm going to show you how you use external functions, which are beyond scikit-learn as a part of the pipeline. Now, as far as my understanding goes, at the time when I'm recording this tutorial, I was not able to find any tutorial on the internet which talked about this in an understandable manner. And this is the reason why a lot of people who know about pipelines also do not use pipelines because they get restricted to only using what's readily available within scikit-learn and they're never able to use their specific functions for the pipelines. Why would that even be needed? See, imputation, we have something readily available. Scaling, we have available. one hard encoding, we have it available. What about outliers? Do you have a function in scikit-learn for treating outliers? Not really. So you may want to write something on your own which you want to use as a part of the pipeline. We'll show you that aspect next. So just like we have these classes like standard scalar or one hard encoder or simple imputer, we are defining our own class called outlier transformer, which takes these inputs as base estimator and transformer mixin, which we kind of imported above. Now, before I explain the next step, I'll have to once again take you to the pipeline documentation so that you understand the need of what we are doing. See, I'm just highlighting a specific section of it. It says intermediate steps of the pipeline must be transforms. That is, they must implement fit and transform methods. The final estimator only needs to implement fit. What does it mean? So we cannot introduce a random function just like that as a part of the pipeline. We'll have to define a proper class which needs to have the fit and transform methods in it only then it will be able to synchronize with the pipelines. Let's go back and try to understand. We are defining a class called outlier transformer. Why? Because the outlier transformer class is not readily available in scikit-learn. What inputs does it take? It takes the base estimator and the transformer mixin. This transformer mixin basically makes the fit and transform applicable. So the first method here is the init method it essentially is used to initialize any newly created object. In this case, we are not going to be needing it, so we are simply doing a pass, but we still have to mention it. Then we are defining a fit method, which again is not doing anything, but you just saw the documentation. The class needs to have the fit and transform methods. Whether they do something or not is not important. We are not doing any calculations based on this, but we need this name for the fit method so that we can say that we've applied the fit because only after it is applied is when you can call the transform. And then this is the main transform method. This is where some changes happen. So what are the changes that are happening here? If you've seen our tutorials on outlier treatment, we are simply capping the upper and lower limit thing here. We are saying we will calculate the lower quantile, the upper quantile, IQR, and we will determine the lower limit and upper limit. Lower limit below which a value is an outlier, upper limit above which a value is an outlier and we are also doing a treatment. So whenever a value is less than the lower limit, we are bringing it to lower limit, else leaving it as is. And whenever it's greater than the upper limit, we are bringing it to the upper limit, else leaving it as is. So this is basically the typical capping and flooring kind of a treatment for outliers. Now we've discussed other approaches for outlier treatment as well, which were maybe superior, but this is just for illustration purposes that if we want to bring a custom function into use, how do we do that? And the way to go about it would be through the class definition. 
So let me first run the previous line of code and import the classes and define the new class here. Now here comes the crux of the entire pipeline. We are defining a numeric pipeline which uses the pipeline class and puts these steps in the form of a list of tuples. These square brackets, if you see, indicate a list. And what you see with parentheses here are nothing but tuples. So this is a list of tuples. What do these tuples contain? It contains the name of the step. So it's an imputer and we're bringing the class called simple imputer. See, we could have done it with mean as well, but in this case, we chose to change it to median because we have not so far treated the outliers before doing the missing value treatment. So ideally outliers will influence the mean. They will not have any influence on the median. You understand the basics. So we are using the median for imputing the missing values. And then we are calling the outlier transformer. If we would have not defined this in the previous step, we would have not been able to do the outlier treatment through this pipeline. And then the purpose of the pipeline gets beaten. Then we're calling the standard scaler, which will do the scaling, bringing the features on the same value. Likewise, we are defining a categorical pipeline, again, inside the pipeline class. Again, using this pipeline class, we are passing the imputer. And this time, because it's categorical features, the imputation strategy would be the mode or the most frequent level. Encoder would be the one hot encoder. And we are simply dropping the first category and writing the sparse output is equal to false. By default, this is true and it's not mandatory that you have to make it false. It's just that sparsity means the presence of zeros in the data. And we have a smaller data set. So in our case, it would not make much of a difference. Even if we just ignore it, it'll be fine. Okay, now we are putting these two pipelines together and this will be done using the column transformer class. Column transformer class has a parameter called transformer where we put the numeric pipeline and the categorical pipeline together. So we are saying for each numerical feature in the range of five, we are putting the name of the numerical features and categorical pipeline, we are simply passing the names of the categorical features. So this essentially binds the numerical and categorical features in a pipeline. Whatever we did on this path and whatever we did on this path is now being put together. Let's see, we'll run this. And then the next step would simply be to put this preprocessor as a part of the pipeline. So we've defined this as column transformer as a variable called preprocessor, and we want to just put it together. So let me scroll down a little bit and run this piece. We are putting this preprocessor as a part of the pipeline, and we are doing a fit transform on this while dropping the target column. The target column will be left aside because we didn't need to do any treatment on the target column. We only wanted to do treatment on some of the independent features. Let's look at the transform data. So if you see this transform data is in the form of an array, but this is not something we'll be comfortable reading or exploring further. So what we'll do is we'll try to convert this to a data frame format. Now, what do we need for the data frame? We have the values available. Whatever we need to fill inside the table in a data frame is available. We still need to have the proper feature names. Now you may be wondering why we need feature names. We already know them. No. We had some original features. Numerical features would retain their names as is. But the categorical features, since we did one hot encoding, those have been extended to more columns than what we originally had in our data. So we need to get the feature names and then we'll be able to construct a proper data frame. Let's look at the pipeline name steps. So this is an attribute which we can check what all steps have been done as a part of the pipeline. Kind of gives you an overview. It was a column transformer. These were the pipeline steps for the numerical features. These were the pipeline steps for the categorical features. And what we want to do is from the preprocessor here, we want to get the named transformers, which are belonging to the categorical features. And there is a method there, which is called the get feature names out for these inputs. This please note would be different now because a single feature in case of one hot encoding would be broken into multiple features which would have been placed side by side. Finally, we are getting the categorical feature names as we did here and converting it to a list. So let me just do a print of that and you see, earlier you had cat1, cat2, cat3, but now you have these categories identified differently as per the labels present in each feature. So this cat1 had A, B, and C. Because we dropped the first level A in case of one-hot encoding, we are left with B and C. And that's what you have as the two features. Likewise, there was a column called cat2, 
which had labels like X, Y, Z, X got dropped, Y and Z are present as two separate features. Likewise, the third column had five levels and the first level P got dropped, we have the remaining labels here. So now we'll have to concatenate the original numerical columns and these categorical features. Why we're using DF now here? Because these were the original numerical column names and we did not really create multiple columns out of the numerical features. Let's just get the list of features. So these are the features. Now that we know the features, it's very simple. We already know the array, which has all the values. We know the features and we can just create our transform data. So this is the transform data that we have. You can see that the features have already been scaled. Earlier we had huge magnitude differences between the features and features have also been converted into zeros and ones as per the one hard encoding requirement. If you want to detect the presence of missing values and outliers, you can now check on the transform data. Do we still have any missing value present in any of the features? So no, the missing values have all been treated. Do we have outliers present in the data? Let's check that. So same kind of code that we used earlier. It's just that now the data that we are checking it for is the transform data. We are choosing the numerical features from the transform data. The feature names will remain as per the original data and we are creating our box plots. We still seem to have some outliers. For example, there are outliers present here and there are some borderline cases here. But this is how the outliers were in the original data. All the features had outliers. Now we are talking about very limited outliers and maybe just two features. And we don't have to treat them again and again. So to sum up, we've been able to apply pipeline doing some critical data pre-processing like missing value treatment, outlier treatment, scaling and encoding as a part of the pipeline. We also saw how to bring our own custom class as a part of the pipeline, which is crucial for real world applications. You may not always just use a built-in class. You may try to experiment with some real world data in different ways. But when we work on the real world data, we often have the data partitioned into train and test or train and validation set. How do you apply pipelines in those scenarios is something that I'm going to explain in the next tutorial. So this is an important topic and anybody who wants to be hands-on with data science needs to know this. Stay tuned for more.